life license plate today. For more information, go to ChooseLife.org or call 352-624-2854. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud Stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting great song. It's a great singer. It's yes. good to hear Dolly Parton again, huh? Oh, yeah. I don't know when she did that, but it's just so nice. All right. Well, happy Independence Day. Happy Fourth of July. And uh, we have a phone line open if you want to call in. We're just going to chat. I've got a few things I prepared for this morning since we don't have any guests. Um, and some of them have to do with the Declaration of Independence. So I wanted to start there. Uh, have you ever seen the uh, Declaration of Independence in, in um, the Smithsonian or wherever it is? Where is it actually? Do you know? Oh, I think it's I think it's in Philadelphia because I think that's what we saw when we were over there in oh, 2014. Okay. We went to you know the section and everything, and I I think we saw that there were these documents behind glass, and it was just so overwhelming. So. I think one of them was there. Let me see. It says here, um, the National Archives in Washington, D.C. Because mm-hmm. um, these were behind glass, and then they retracted. They went underneath the floor at night. The rotunda of the National Archives building in, well, now what just changed. What the hell? <laughs> Computer did its own thing. Okay. The National Archives Museum depicts our astounding national mosaic and tells the stories. I think Joe was telling me that they uh, sometimes it just sucks back into the ground to protect it. Yeah. Or some, they've got some kind of a deal there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. The National Archives stores plays a vital role in fulfilling the mission of the National Archives Foundation by providing... Oh, okay. It gives you replications of the, of the documents. Anyway, yeah, I feel like I've seen it, but I'm not 100% sure that I've seen it. I uh, Like you say, you saw it in Philadelphia. I thought I yeah, saw it in D.C. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I know there was more than one copy, right? I mean, they, they, right. they and, and did it back more in the than day, one, yeah, so, yeah. but I can't recall exactly if that's what we saw, but I'm pretty sure that's what we saw, 2014. I can't remember. Um, I should, but I don't. It says the national, the rotunda of the National Archives building in downtown Washington, D.C. displays the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Declaration of Independence, but it doesn't say, like you say, there's more than one original one, right? Mm-hmm. So here's some facts about the uh, Declaration of Independence. There is something written on the back of the Declaration of Independence. Oh, okay. But if you are thinking about a movie that made it seem like there was a special code or a map, that's not what's back there. There, okay. <laughs> there are a few handwritten words that say, quote, original declaration of independence dated 4th July, 1776, unquote. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows who wrote that, but it was probably added as a label when the document was rolled up for storage many years 
ago, which was just a few years after the original document became the founding document of, mm-hmm. of this country. Mm-hmm. Once the Declaration of Independence had been written and signed, uh, Don, uh, John Dunlap, who was a printer, was asked to make about 200 copies to be distributed throughout the colonies. Today, the Dunlap broadsides are extremely rare and valuable. In 1989, someone discovered a previously unknown Dunlap broadside. It was sold for over $8 million in the year 2000. Wow. Wow. There are only 26 known surviving Dunlap broadside copies of the Declaration of Independence today. Only 26 of them. Uh, That's still pretty good to survive decades, uh, centuries. Yeah, yeah. Thomas Jefferson is often called the author of the Declaration of Independence. He was not the only person who contributed ideas to that document. Uh, he was a member of a five-person committee appointed by the Continental Congress to write the Declaration of Independence. The committee included Jefferson, uh, Benjamin Franklin, which I'm sure you figured that one out. But Benjamin Franklin, by the way, is now called Henry Kissinger. Just so you know. Oh, okay. There he, you. This, <laughs> this guy is eternal. He's, he doesn't die. He just exactly. got a wig because he used to be bald and now yeah. he's on a $100 bill. But that's the same guy. I'm pretty sure. He somehow <laughs> yeah. got a German accent. That's right. <laughs> uh, John Adams was one of those guys. Robert Livingston and Roger Sherman. That was the group of men who uh, all contributed their ideas to what is now called the Declaration of Independence. Uh, Robert Livingston, by the way, um, never signed it. He believed that it was too soon to declare independence and refused to sign it. Oh, my. So while he was part of the, uh, the thought tank, the think tank. Yeah. Yeah. The hand, the crafters. He never signed it. Oh, it was, my God. It was too soon, I guess. I don't know. Too soon. When, no, it's when, never when, too soon. No, nah, it's never too soon. Uh, you know, I, I, here's what I feel. I feel like uh, the word independence, it's a wonderful word. But I think the truth is that we are interdependent. You know, we depend on one another. You know, we, sure. we don't exist as individuals without everybody else contributing to our lives. Exactly. We don't in- exist as a country without others contributing to our lives. Now, that doesn't mean we're dependent on anybody, but it does mean we are, are there to support one another. And I, I think that's the way God made it. Mm-hmm. I think that's the way he wanted it. I mean, look at the rest of all of creation. It's everything is dependent on everything else. Yeah, you for know? sure. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, one of the most widely held misconceptions about the Declaration of Independence is that it was signed on July 4th, 1776. In fact, independence was formally declared on July 2nd, 1776, a date that John Adams believed would be the most memorable date in the history of America, Mm -hmm. but on the 4th of July, Congress approved the final text, which is uh, why this is the date that we celebrate, Um, although it wasn't even signed until August 2nd of that year, so, but it is the date on the the document, which is why we are celebrating it today. That's right. And good morning, you're on the air. Yeah, good morning, good morning. Um, The... uh, uh, the Star Spangled Banner uh, was recorded by many, many different people over the years. Um, Stan Kenton commissioned his uh, arranger, uh, Bob Kernow, to do an arrangement which featured a piano part, because Stan was a piano player. Mm-hmm. And they, they recorded this in 1972 along with the uh, national anthem of many other different countries. Uh, Stan became ill and had to go to the hospital, so Bob Kerno actually played the piano part. But Bob had not kept his musicians' union dues up, so Stan Kenton uh, appears on the album credits. There you go. Nice. Oh, I like that wow. kind of stuff. Nice, cool stuff. Isn't that something? Thank, thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. Okay, no. Bye. I, if, uh, I have a few versions of it that I could uh, play. Sometimes on in the past, on the 4th of July, we've... Um, done music shows and we'll, yes. we'll we'll throw a few in here and there uh after thomas jefferson wrote his first draft of the declaration of independence the other members of the declaration committee the guys i mentioned before and the continental congress made some changes to jefferson's draft 
They made 86 changes, to be exact. 86. Okay. 86 changes. Okay. Including shortening the overall length by more than a fourth. So it used to be rather long compared to what it is now. Uh, when writing the first draft of the Declaration, Jefferson uh, drew upon two sources, his own draft of a preamble to the Virginia Constitution and George Mason's draft of Virginia's Declaration of Rights. Oh, so, uh, okay. so if you look up those documents, uh, you will see uh, it's, it's kind of like you know looking at a, at a song and knowing that uh, this song is sort of based on that song. You sort of can see the resemblance. Good morning, you're on the air. Hey, Larry, Robin. Hey, Larry, Robin. Uh, you mentioned the Declaration of Independence. I know somebody has a copy hanging up in their house. You do? It's right above uh, about eight thousand dollars worth of paintings that somebody left here. <laughs> There you, go. you didn't notice it up on the wall, did you? I don't think I did, no. It's there, right above those paintings. All right, excellent. <laughs> somebody, hey, Larry, somebody threw that thing into the trash. Oh, wow. And I read that, and I said, how can they throw that thing away? You retrieved it. Good for you. That's wonderful. I did. Wow. I do that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Larry Robbins. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate the call. Um, so when they made the 86 changes to the Declaration of Independence, um, Thomas Jefferson was not happy. Nobody is ever happy when people change their writing, right? No. Um, he had originally included language condemning the promotion of the slave trade. Now, isn't that interesting? Oh, and they took it out. He originally included language condemning the promotion of the slave trade. Gosh. Wow. Gosh. That is fascinating, isn't it? On, yeah. On December 13th, 1952, the Declaration of Independence was formally delivered to the National Archives in Washington, D.C., where it has remained since then. Oh, so there's your answer. Wow. But, but wow. So where was it up until then? Mm -hmm. The Constitution and the Bill of Rights also were delivered that day. So all three documents were delivered. And... Uh, 1952, all those years, it must have, they must have been hanging out somewhere else. Yeah, sure. Uh, the two youngest signers of the Declaration of Independence were both from the state of South Carolina. Uh, they are Thomas Lynch Jr. and Edward Rutledge of South Carolina. They were both born in 1749, and they were only 26 years old when they signed the Declaration of Independence. How old do you think most of the others were? In their 70s. 40s and 50s. Oh, oh, 40s and 50s. You are okay. already older than all of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. That's right. Wow. And older than Alaska and Hawaii, too. So. De definitely older than those. <laughs> That's me. Definitely <laughs> older than me, too. <laughs> uh, let's see. Philosopher John Locke's ideas were an important influence on the Declaration of Independence. Thomas Jefferson restated Locke's contract theory of government when he wrote in the Declaration that governments derived, quote, their just powers from the consent of the people. That's where we get that phrase from. It's from uh, John Locke, the philosopher. Thank you, John Locke. We get, the government gets their just powers from the consent of the people. Mm -hmm. They should remember that. We all don't. need to remember that. The government has, people do. The government is us. Yeah. And, and if we let them think that they control us, then we have lost everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the elected officials sure don't remember that. From local on up to the, the beauty, The beauty of freedom of the press mm -hmm. is that it is the press. Now, we all have problems with the media. Yeah. But if it weren't for the media, if it weren't for the press, we would not have a, a government that minded its P's and Q's. Mm -mm. That's what I think. Yeah, I think great. it is the idea that you and I can get on a microphone and not go to jail for expressing our opinion. We can sh we can express discontent with the president, discontent with the governor. Mm -hmm. We can we can show our disapproval of their actions. You know, we can say um, we don't like the fact that you're doing this, and we can condemn them for doing it. And we are free to say those things, and that freedom keeps them in check. Now, does it mean that all of the media is right and all of the media is uh, noble and good? No. No, you know, 
darn well. There's a lot of nutcases out there, but For but sure. that's but that was the basis, you know, of the uh, the whole country was to to allow us to be able to uh, a live freely, live with liberty. Mm-hmm. The I- independence is an interesting word. Uh, as a country, we were independent from England, but as individuals, we were never independent. We were always interdependent on one another. You grew crops, and I uh, forged metal so you could put shoes on your horse. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, you gave me a, a bushel of you know corn, and I gave you some horseshoes. Yeah, you know, right. or whatever. Uh, we all depended on one another. Um, I think you all know this one. Thomas Jefferson and John Adams both died on the 4th of July in 1826. It was the 50th anniversary of the vote to approve the Declaration of Independence. Isn't that something? Thomas Jefferson, John Adams. Uh, Let me take a little break. We've got more. Good. Got more 4th of July stuff. So let's do a little (laughs) bit and we'll come right back. I'll I'll come back out of the break with a, a patriotic song. I don't know which one yet. I'll okay. try to find one I like. All right, we'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe voting is no accident. A mix of sun and clouds today with some thunderstorms, especially inland for the afternoon. A high of 90 to 94. Partly cloudy tonight, a low of 73 to 77. Tomorrow and Thursday, an afternoon thunderstorm, especially inland. We should stay dry at the coast. Otherwise, partly sunny with highs of 90 to 94 both days. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Maggie Johnson. Hey, this is Matt Wilkerson from Verizon. You work all day, right? So why would you want to spend your night out shopping for that new phone? Well, Marion County, let me and Verizon help you out. I can deliver to your home or office, saving you precious time. Phone, tablets, internet, home phones, even accessories. Whatever you need, we will deliver free of charge. Call me at the store, 352-528-0020. That's 528-0020. If you or a loved one is suffering with knee, shoulder, neck, back pain, or tennis elbow, and would like to learn how to get out of pain, go to Regenetic.com. Then listen in on the first and third Thursday at 10 a.m. to the people that give you the regenerative medical solutions to your pain. Regenetic, first and third Thursdays, 10 a.m. here on WOCA 96.3 FM, 1370 a.m. The Source, Regenetic.com. Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA, the source, every night from 2 to 6 a.m., and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep. And neither do we. So we're here with you live from 2 till 6 a.m. every weekday. Call us, 866-90-RED-EYE. So join me, Gary McNamara, and me, Eric Harley, every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment right here on WOCA, the source. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. I'm Jan Marino from Palm Garden of Ocala, and I'd like to tell you about the Palm Garden Way. We promote individual care, of course, but we also encourage gems. That's going the extra mile, and these are thoughtful individual gifts that make each guest stay special. A gem could be a daily latte or a new book or something else that means a lot to our guest. To find out more about the Palm Garden Way, take a tour located on the corner of 27th Avenue and 34th Street in Ocala. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, four minutes uh, before 11 o'clock, the uh, singer before the Pledge of Allegiance was um, Leanne Rimes. Oh, Okay. And uh, the, the speaker who did the uh, pledge to the flag was um, uh, Charlie Daniels. Oh, okay. Charlie Daniels. Yeah. Okay. We had Charlie Daniels. We had both of them on the air. Yes, so we two did. Two different times. Wow. We sure did. We, we pr- kind of privileged we get these people on, huh? Yeah. Uh, nice. yeah. Charlie Daniels has been on more than once. He came on to promote his book. Yeah. Remember? Uh, he did. Yeah. It was something not just, not a rag. What did he, what did he say? Not a rag? What was the name of his book? Yeah, I can't remember. Oh, let me find it. Let me find it. I cannot remember. Charlie Daniels' said. book, I think it's called Not It's Not a Rag or something. Uh, okay, rag book. Let me see. Uh, yeah, he was on, and uh, and she was on. She had, some, oh, yeah, it's called Ain't, Ain't No Rag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Funny. He, he's, uh, yeah, I found it on Google. And she was on. She was actually had some kind of a condition, a medical condition. She yeah. Was, she was talking about that, yeah. It's funny how sometimes when we have uh, celebrities on, we have notes on what we cannot ask them. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? I do. Yeah. And then you did something special one year. You sent out emails to, well, Charlie Daniels was one of them. He accepted to a lot of these celebrities. And uh, we set up times for them to call in to wish everybody a happy 4th of July in our community. And I forget how many celebrities you got to do that, but they they called in. We Did recorded, I really? Yep. We had uh, recorded their voices, and that was just so cool. It was just so well, I'm going to have to that find them. I don't even ago. remember doing that. Yeah, that was a few years ago. We sent wow. out, uh, you remember. sent out a request. You know, it's ringing a bell. <laughs> we've, yeah. we've done so much. Yeah. I, I just forgot that happened. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, Charlie Daniels story. Um, in the 70s. Charlie Daniels had uh, written a, an article in, in one of the m- magazines that the music industry uh, does, I guess Downbeat or uh, um, one of those magazines. Uh, and he, uh, he, his opinion was that no jazz musician could possibly uh, play a, a country and western tune. And he <laughs> issued... He issued a challenge, a ten thousand dollar challenge that that uh, nobody uh, could possibly, no jazz musician could possibly play country and western. What he didn't know was that in in 1961, Stan Kenton had recorded an album with Tex Ritter, and, and Stan dug out one of the albums and mailed it to Charlie Daniels with a bill for $10,000. <laughs> oh, did he pay? Did he pay him? That's funny. No, Charlie didn't pay him. Ah, <laughs> oh, that is interesting. Hey, thank uh, One of those funny stories. That is a good one. All right, I, I've got more. Thank you, Jim. We've got more 4th of July special on the other side of the break. Let's take the break, listen to uh, news of the day. Um, got a, uh, Speaking of Charlie Daniels, I have a piece that he did called My America... Um, it really, you know, this whole thing with Amtrak, I, I really, I mean, you could drive around the country, but wouldn't it be cool to do one of those ra- America, USA Rail passes or something, whatever oh, they call yeah. it, and see the whole country? All right, we will be right back. This is Independence Day. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. 
News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. China could be teaming up with Russia in the pushback against North Korea and its claims it successfully fired an intercontinental ballistic missile with enough range to reach Alaska. China has called for calm after the launch took place from Pyongyang's North Pyongyang province, with the missile flying nearly 600 miles before landing in the Sea of Japan. Jane Secker with Fox Sister Network Sky News. Russia and China have proposed that North Korea declare a moratorium on nuclear and missile tests while the U.S. and South Korea hold back on large-scale military exercises. Just in time for a 4th of July celebrations, the government shutdown in New Jersey ending beaches opening. We had Liberty State Park and Island Beach State Park open by about 7 o'clock this morning. Bob Considine of the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, Fox News. We report, you decide. Napa know how. Buckets are good. Good at storing, carrying, and hauling all kinds of stuff. But the Napa bucket for $3.99 does more good than that. Like getting you 20% off three or more items that fit inside. And donating a dollar to the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund. So do our soldiers and yourself some good. And save 20% with the Napa bucket. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores while supplies last. Exclusions apply. Offer expires 7 31 17 There is more to me, Queen Eliara of Elfgard, than my elven magic. Just as there's more to Geico than saving you money, Geico also gives you 24-7 access to licensed agents online, on the phone, or on the Geico app. And while I am a mighty elf queen, I am also a mighty big fan of barbecue potato chips. Minions? More smoky mesquite. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. It's time for Farmer Ranch Headlines on the Southeast Agnet. I'm Tyron Spearburn reporting. Today we're visiting with Sherry Collins. She's a registered dietitian with the National Peanut Board working on the allergy issue. We hear a lot about it in the news. Sherry, what kind of progress are we making? Well, this is a really exciting time to be working in peanut allergies. In fact, the latest research shows that early introduction of peanut foods between 4 and 11 months can actually prevent peanut allergies. And this is being spread all over the country? Absolutely. The National Peanut Board is working hard uh, to get the information information out both through the media, through health influencers like registered dietitians, uh, nurses, school nutrition professionals, and physicians, and also through uh, reaching consumers through the media. understand you're traveling and going to shows and uh, telling the good news. Is that right? Absolutely. So I'm attending shows around the country to reach those influencers I just mentioned, as well as the media. So in, last week I was in New York City talking to editors, helping to spread the news and get them talking about this exciting new research. I understand the National Peanut Board has made quite an investment in trying to solve this allergy issue. They have. In the, in the uh, 15 or so years the National Peanut Board's been around, they've invested more than $21 million toward research, food allergy education, and outreach. And that's all that 1% that comes from the farmers, and uh, I know you want to express appreciation to those farmers. Absolutely. We couldn't do what we do without the dollars that the farmers invest in this program, and we are incredibly grateful for your help. Sherry Collins. The USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service has a program to reward and encourage environmental stewardship for ag and forestry producers. The Conservation Stewardship Program, or CSP, is voluntary. Applicants must be USDA operators. CSP participants will adopt new conservation practices and manage existing ones. For more information on CSP, visit nrcs.usda.gov or call NRCS. Helping people help the land. I'm Tyron Spearman for Southeast Agnet. Whether you're building it up or knocking it down, get it done, rent it now. Sunbelt Rentals is here to make your job a little easier. Our knowledgeable staff will help you find the right equipment for any job, big or small. Did you know that Sunbelt Rentals carries heaters, air conditioners, generators, lighting, traffic control, and so much more? So whether you're building it up or knocking it down, we've got the equipment you need. Get it done, rent it now. And right now, for a limited time, you can have it for less. Just by mentioning this ad, if you rent it Friday afternoon, you can keep it the whole weekend and only pay for one day. But this is a limited time offer, so stop into Sunbelt Rentals today, Northwest 27th, just a quarter mile east of I-75. For more information, just give us a call, 352-369-9101. 352-369-9101. Sunbelt Rentals. Get it done, rent it now. 352-369-9101. 
All right, five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Happy 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. Uh, we are celebrating the uh, 200, um, what is it, the 247th, Robin? 70, I think so. 46th. Uh, I can't remember the exact yep. number of years uh, since the signing of, uh, since the, the date of the Declaration of Independence. How about we say that? Yeah, 200. I have a, I have a trivia years. question for you. It's kind of a trick question. You can use it if you want to, to kind of trick somebody. The question is this. How many of those who signed the Declaration of Independence were born in the United States? Of oh, all, there you go. What is, the, what is the answer, do you think? Zero. Zero is right. I would think zero. Because there were, there was no country called the yeah. United States of America until that declaration was signed. <laughs> That's right. And technically not even then. The United States didn't exist until after the declaration was signed. Mm -hmm. However... In August, you said. All, right. All but eight of the signers were born in colonies that would later become the United States. But mm -hmm. that's like a trivia question. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Uh, by the way, while we were on the break, I found this out. Okay, so there's a copy of the Declaration of Independence in the National Archives in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. But you heard I said copy. Yeah. So that is not the draft that was approved by the Continental Congress on July 4th, 1776. Instead, it is a formal copy that the Continental Congress hired someone to make for them after the text was approved. This formal copy was probably made by Timothy Matlack, who was an assistant to the Secretary of Congress. Um, the copy was signed August 2nd, 1776, so I still don't know where the original, original one is. Mm -hmm. uh, the oldest person to sign the Declaration of Independence was Henry Kissinger. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin, I'm sorry. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin was already 70 years old at the time. He went on to help negotiate the Treaty of Alliance with France in 1778 and the Treaty of Paris, which ended the Revolutionary War in 1783. The first time the Declaration of Independence was read aloud to the public was in Philadelphia. It was July 8th, 1776. I wonder if they'll be doing a celebration up there, uh, recreating that moment. I bet they do. Four days. Uh, there's a story written um, that they say is fictional. It was written in the 1840s, and it suggested that the bell, now known as the Liberty Bell, was rung that day to bring the people together. However, historians doubt that that ever happened. Gosh. The steeple that housed the bell was in very bad condition at the time, and the bell was probably unusable. Wow. Gosh. Um, although August 2nd was the official date... There were several people who signed later. Uh, some of the late signers include Eldbridge Jerry, Oliver Walcott, Lewis Morris, Thomas McKean, and Matthew Thornton. Mm -hmm. I, wanted to, I just want to talk a little bit about um, this country. Um, not the politics, not the philosophy, but the land. Okay? This land that we call the United States of America. Because it really is vast, Right. That's it, right. it is it is part of my bucket list to see more of this land. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is. I I have seen when I was I, I played colleges for three years when I was younger. Playing colleges meaning I, I played music in colleges, mm -hmm. and by doing that, I had an opportunity to see a lot of this country on the East Coast, from Miami up to Bridgeport, Connecticut. I believe as far as I went, but a lot of things in between. West Virginia was one that really. Uh, struck me as a beautiful, beautiful place. I mean, so many beautiful places. Mm -hmm. the, the, I was watching this video of this railroad um, in West Virginia called the Cass Railroad, I think, and it used to be used to um, ship lumber um, from the woods there, and now it's a national park. The railroad is considered a national park. Isn't that amazing? Oh, how cool is that? And so it doesn't pay for itself. The, the, the state of uh, West Virginia uh, pays. No, did I say national park? I mean a state yeah. park. It's a, okay. it's a state park. So the state of West Virginia actually foots the bill for the maintain, maintenance and operation of this train that's an old locomotive. It puts out a lot of smoke, too. I was watching a video. <laughs> And it just, it, it's got this beautiful, beautiful uh, rail that it goes down. I mean, the, the, the scenery that you see when you're on that train. Mm -hmm. And it's not a fancy 
car that you sit in. In fact, some of them were standing. But it just looks like a beautiful thing. If you ever get to West Virginia, check it out. Oh, wow. And so I, I was Sounds watching, pretty. looking at this other thing. In fact, I, I downloaded a book. I can't remember the name of it. But this lady is talking about tips on how to see the country on Amtrak. Now, mm-hmm. Amtrak is, you know, on the chopping block. It is. With, it's iffy. With the new budget. So we don't know if that's going to be around much longer or not. We hope it will be. Um, but the the thing is, they have this thing called the USA Rail Pass, I think it is. And you can get a rail pass for 30 days. Mm-hmm. Now, what that means is, and this is cool. You have to look into it. I, I don't know the details. I'm not an expert. But what it sounds like is the pass is for 30 days. You do not sit on the train for 30 days. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> you just get crazy. this. You just get this pass. You make up an itinerary. And you make sure that on day 30, if you're getting off the train in, in at your starting point. Mm-hmm. And you can ride it, let's say, from here to Atlanta. Get off, explore Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Then you can go from Atlanta to, I don't know, Birmingham, Alabama. Explore Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Then you can go maybe up to Louisville, Kentucky and explore there. And you can take time in those 30 days to actually get to know the places. You don't sit on the train for 30 days. Yeah. But you have access to the train for 30 days, mm-hmm. which is very, very cool. And and this lady who did this, she did this. She's a teacher. So she had the whole summer off. And she took her two children with her, two or three, I can't remember. Her husband stayed home. And she and the kids rode the train all over the country. Her husband didn't want to go? I think he did not want to go, yeah. Oh, he probably had a job, though. He yeah. probably needed to yeah. work to yeah, pay yeah. for the train. Okay. Well, 30 days is a long time yeah, <laughs> yeah, for most people. But a teacher, you know, teachers have that, that little luxury of hunk of a vacation. Yeah. summer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so she's writing in the book about how she um, saw the Grand Canyon how she saw um, the, the the whales, I guess, off the coast of Oregon or something like that. Mm-hmm. How she saw the um, uh, the North Dakota plains and all that. It, it was just, I mean, you have to read the book. It's a very, very short book. It's only like 80 pages, I think. Very short. But in it, she explains what she did and how she did it. And something called USA Rail. And, and they have the same thing in uh, Canada. They have one for their train service. Mm-hmm. So if you ever wanted to do it up there. And I think they have one in Europe, too. Nice. Kind of cool. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I did that uh, way back in the 70s. Uh, I did the USA Rail Pass. And uh, I went all the way out to Seattle and back. Uh, wow. uh, I lived in New York at the time. Uh, what would you and, think? Uh, did you get off and spend time? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I, I, uh, we had friends in Albuquerque, New Mexico, so I spent a day with friends in Albuquerque. I went out to the Grand Canyon, spent uh, spent two days out there. Wow, that's uh, cool. Went to Los Angeles, uh, uh, did a little bit in the L.A., and then went up to Seattle, uh, uh Walked around Seattle you know, for a day, and then uh, I saw my, saw my cousin up there, then uh, came back to New York. Wow. Well, that is cool. I want to do that. we got to yeah. make sure they don't get rid of Amtrak. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Definitely. All right. So, so how would you like Steve? He was awesome. Yeah. He was yeah. great. He's, he's going to help us keep that thing. Yeah. Okay, okay. Have a good day. Thank you, Jim. You know what? I have a... I have a a sound clip from Charlie Daniels, and I believe in this sound clip he talks about the uh, the land of this country called the United States of America. Have you ever spent the late afternoon watching the purple shadows deepen in the Arizona desert? Or seen a herd of elk plow their way through waist-deep snow on a cold Colorado dawn? Did you ever see the sun go down in Hawaii or see the stormy waves break over the rock-bound coast of Maine? Or have you ever seen an eagle fly up out of the mists of Alaska or a big October moon hanging full over the still Dakota Badlands? Have you ever tasted the gumbo in New Orleans, barbecue in Carolina, or the chicken wings in Buffalo? Have you ever had Brunswick stew in Macon, or cornbread in Birmingham, or brisket slow-cooked over hill country mesquite wood? 
Did you ever drink the water from a gurgling branch in Utah? Stand on the mountain above El Paso del Norte and see the lights twinkling clear over into Mexico? Did you ever jingle horses in the pre-dawn stillness of a perfect Texas day and watch their shod hooves kicking up sparks on the volcanic rock? Or tended a trot line on a foggy Carolina morning or heard the distant song of a lovesick whippoorwill in a pristine Tennessee late night? Have you seen the faces on Mount Rushmore or stood at the Vietnam Monument? Have you ever crossed the mighty Mississippi or been to the daddy of them all in Cheyenne, Wyoming? Or seen the mighty Vols run out on the football field on a chilly autumn afternoon? Did you ever see the Chicago skyline from Lakeshore Drive at night? Or the New England foliage in the fall? Or the summer beauty of the Shenandoah Valley? Or Indiana covered with new snow? Did you ever see a herd of wild horses running free across the empty spaces of Nevada? Or caught a walleye pike out of a cold Wisconsin stream or marveled at the tall ships docked in the harbor at Baltimore? Did you ever see the early morning dew sparkling on the bluegrass? Or the wind stir the wheat fields on a hot Kansas afternoon or driven the lonely stretches of old Route 66? Have you ever heard the church bells peal their call to worship on an early Sunday in some small town in the deep south? Or passed through the redwood forest as the sun was going down? Have you ever been to Boise or Baxley or Beaufort or Billings? Have you ever passed through Sanford or Suffolk or San Angelo? Have you ever seen the falls at Niagara? The Ice Palace in St. Paul or the Gateway to the West? This then is America. The land God blesses with everything. And no Eiffel Tower, no Taj Mahal, no Alps, no Andes, no Native Hut, nor Royal Palace can rival her awesome beauty, her diverse population, her monolithic majesty. America the free, America the mighty, America the beautiful. Weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. A mix of sun and clouds today with some thunderstorms, especially inland for the afternoon. A high of 90 to 94. Partly cloudy tonight, a low of 73 to 77. Tomorrow and Thursday, an afternoon thunderstorm, especially inland. We should stay dry at the coast. Otherwise, partly sunny with highs of 90 to 94 both days. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Maggie Johnson. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that, I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that, too. And I need a new roof line, and a new spoiler, and a new yep, truck. Yep, we can even do that, too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show, too. Well, as a matter of fact, join me, Matt Gibbs, from Sunrise Automotive every Tuesday at 10 for auto repair with personal care right here on The Source. You've got a garden and we've got a show for you called You've Got a Garden with your host, Master Gardener Carol Ann Baldwin. Carol Ann answers your questions about your flowers, your veggies, your grass, your trees, even questions about your bugs. And she's only on WOCA, so don't miss Carol Ann Baldwin and You've Got a Garden each Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. right here on WOCA The Source. The entire world watched. They watched each step down the rungs of that small ladder, one after another, and waited with great anticipation for that last step. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. At that moment, humanity saw the impossible become the possible. And today, the sky is not the limit. Achievement, pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. An unexpected pregnancy can turn a young woman's life upside down. The House of One in Faith in Ocala gives these young women a place to live in privacy and comfort under the Christian care of counselors who will guide and protect both the woman and her unborn child. The House of One in Faith is confidential, loving, and free. For more information, call 352-687-8895.
Hi, I'm Seth with AA Lock, Dock, and Security. Have you ever thought about the locks or security on your house or business? Have you ever wondered why the keys to your new car cost so much? Well, at AA Lock, Dock, and Security, we can help with securing your valuables. We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. Call AA Lock, Dock, and Security at 867-1965. That's 867 867- one nine six five. All right, twenty minutes after eleven o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Fourth of July. Our friend Mike Iannacone joining us right now, and uh, he was hearing us talking about Charlie Daniels and trains, and he's going to go see Charlie Daniels on a train. So, uh, so you were saying you wanted to go on the train, right? Yeah. A- and you are wondering if they had showers. So I looked it up for you. Are you ready? Yeah. What kind of showers do they have? They have showers. Uh, if you are riding, I think, in the normal, I guess what they call coach section, where you're just in a seat, I th- there's no shower there. Right. Okay. But, but you can go outside when, on a rainy day with a bar of soap, it says here. And, and, and even if you're close enough to the ocean, you can take some Life Boy into the, into the uh, surf. Yes. And take a bath right there by, by, uh, the by soap, JFK. And the soap doesn't turn into like a plastic kind of... <laughs> You've got to sit closer to the microphone. Oh. We can't hear you. <laughs> So the soap doesn't turn anything in the ocean water. No, it doesn't. doesn't it, the, the ocean water, just for some reason, doesn't make a soap bar of soap suds really? up. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So what you can do then? Try that. What you can do then is you can go to the airport because I think for twenty five cents you can get in for three minutes of water, uh-huh. and then you have to put another twenty five cents in for the next three. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I like that. It's a nice, nice thing. I think it's a good thing. But on the train, <laughs> yeah, on the train, <laughs> they have um, roomettes, which do not have showers. But there's a shower in the car. You just have to make sure somebody else isn't in the shower already, or it's a very close friend. A very close friend. Yeah, <laughs> there so you you go. It, do, it does recommend two people. Um, the there's also um, the bedroom suite. Which does have an in-room shower in your room. Really? Yes. The shower and the toilet are in the same room. I'm not making this up. So basically, you would want to sit while you were showering. and uh, Again, it would be someone that you're close to. Exactly. Somebody you're close to. Yeah. So you really wouldn't have walls or anything. I, I couldn't No, there's a wall. You're in a booth. You're in a waterproof booth. Okay. And, but- the, and the toilet paper is in a waterproof booth. Compartment. Oh, okay. I'm looking right at the picture right here. Okay. Well, that would be okay, but to use the bathroom that in close quarters, that's kind of embarrassing. Yeah. Well, there's a door. I, I mean, think, you, you yeah. don't oh. have the door open. Oh, okay. You close the door just like you do here when you use the restroom okay. at the radio station. All right. Then I guess I'm on board. <laughs> you know, I, I think I always would so, forget that. But so, where are you going on a train? Where are you going to go? <clears throat> well, I was, I was going to head west and see the Grand Canyon. Oh, how nice. That's good. That's great. That's wonderful. <laughs> now, does the train go d- into the canyon? <clears throat> no, well, it, it stops off at a place in... Williamstown or something? Williams? Some place like that. I don't know the names. I, I barely could remember what I did yesterday, but... Um, well, this is the future. You can't remember it <clears throat> yet. Yeah, I can't remember what I read, though. That's the problem. <laughs> um, yeah, you Winslow. get low. <laughs> So are you doing it in the summer or in the winter? Wouldn't it be cool to to take a train ride in the winter? No, not for me, but Why? probably for you. Well, well you, you missed the word cool. I said, wouldn't it be cool to take a train ride in the winter? It would be cold, not be co- cool. Well, <laughs> You were setting me up for that. If you want to hear the caller, you have to put your headsets on. Oh. Can you put your headset on? You have a, you have a listener calling in wanting to ask you a question. There you go. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not no. kidding you. Come on. No. You put the headset on. Good morning. You're on the air with yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Author and poet uh, the Amtrak stop for the Grand Canyon is Flagstaff. There you go. And uh, you would uh, uh, rent a car uh, somewhere in Flagstaff and, uh, and and drive up to the canyon, or uh, uh, stay overnight in Flagstaff and then drive over to Williams and take the uh, the Grand Canyon train up into the canyon. Oh, that sounds like fun. Really? I didn't know there was a train. See, I should have done that. I yeah, stayed it's operated in by the it's operated by the, uh, the National Park. See that? I should have done that. No, actually, a concessionaire to the National Park. Uh, oh, okay. That's cool. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. 
Okay, Dirk. Have a good day. Thanks. Uh, so you gonna do that? Are you, are you going in the summer? Like right this year? Are you going <clears throat> today? Um, I'm trying to go this year, but uh, I have some. You gotta hurry. If I, have, if, I have some like things to do. Uh, things rescheduling and stuff. If, if Donald Trump cuts the budget, then Amtrak is done. You can't go anywhere. Mm. You'll have to hitch a ride. Well, you know, not that I would say anything political, but I, I just don't think anything just dies. You know, somewhere along the line, some Asian company will probably purchase the... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're probably right. There you go. They purchased all that real estate in California, so they'll come by and see You the might train. be right. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, because then they'll, they'll turn a profit. That's the thing about, you know, the United States political system. They don't understand profit and loss. They do understand taxes mm -hmm. and collecting them. But but making a profit, no. You they, should do a radio show. Yeah. I don't want to do one of those. But I, I'm, <laughs> Commentary is good. But I'm, but I'm pretty sure that even though they, they cut the budget, Amtrak will still be up and running. Mm -hmm. What makes you so sure? The, the San Francisco Chronicle just this morning had an article that uh, indicated, you know, be worried, write your congressman, otherwise it's going to go away. Well, <clears throat> I think overall what the, this country doesn't have that several other countries do have is a high-speed rail system. And I think that's what the Asian people are looking at, is that... They want to build one here? Yeah, they want to make a faster corridor between... East and west, and north and south. Well, that would be a good idea, yeah. I mean, if you, you, you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, I didn't know I'd be. You can get from London to Paris. We were looking at this on their high speed trail. Was it 180 miles an hour? Yeah, yep. Two hours, just yep. a little over two hours, London to Paris, and all the cows on the tracks, <laughs> <laughs> they're dead. <laughs> Well, it would be worse if you were in India because yeah. well, those cows are sacred. Yeah, you'd be arrested. Then. Oh, that's why those trains go so slow in India. And, and and actually the cows ride inside and the people ride on top. Have you ever seen those pictures? I've seen those I've pictures. Seen pictures. Yeah. 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 The cows are inside. and Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people are on the sides and on the top. <clears throat> yeah, I've seen them. Well, I hope you're right. I mean, that, I, I mean, not that I want to see Asian companies owning our trains, but I'd hate to see them go away. Mm -hmm. I mean, would it be called Nissan <laughs> instead of Amtrak? You know, I, I wouldn't know what it would be called, but, you know, <clears throat> I remember taking a train from uh, Sanford to <clears throat> Miami, and it stopped at every place imaginable. And it was like just riding a, a bus, uh -huh. you know. And then I took it up north um, towards Savannah. Yeah, we went through Georgia, and, you know, I was working in South Carolina at the time. But it was just slow, you know, and and that's because that's the stop at every place. So I think if you modernize and have maybe four, let's say, locations for boarding and unboarding, right. as opposed to 25, then you could actually have a high-speed train that's more effective. The uh, the article Excellent. in the San Francisco Chronicle, uh, this is this morning's news, it says, if the Trump administration has its way, Amtrak will lose about half of its $1.4 billion budget and be forced next year to bump off all of its long-distance runs, eliminating service to 23 states, including the West and the South. Short-haul commuter lines, such as the Capitol Corridor trains to Sacramento, would be all that's left including the northeastern part of this country, by the way. We spoke to a guy yesterday. Those operating losses to totaled $227 million last year. And the losses. But but other people are saying, well, the, the subsidies for the rail are also given to the airports and are also given to the roads we but, drive on. Well, you know, you you got to look at the pros and cons. Now, the pros would be uh, this would keep Joe Biden in Delaware. He wouldn't be able to run the train anymore. <laughs> So, so there's there's obviously pros and cons to everything, but but the key in everything that you said was the long distance runs, and that's what the Asian companies are looking at now because they're developing the engines for train purchases, um, and 
they were like one of the... All right, we got to take a break? Wow. Okay. We'll be right back. News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. China could be teaming up with Russia in the pushback against North Korea and its claims it successfully fired an intercontinental ballistic missile with enough range to reach Alaska. China has called for calm after the launch took place from Pyongyang's North Pyongyang province, with the missile flying nearly 600 miles before landing in the Sea of Japan. Jane Secker with Fox Sister Network Sky News. Russia and China have proposed that North Korea declare a moratorium on nuclear and missile tests while the U.S. and South Korea hold back on large-scale military exercises. Just in time for a 4th of July celebrations, the government shutdown in New Jersey ending, beaches opening. We had Liberty State Park and Island Beach State Park open by about 7 o'clock this morning. Bob Considine of the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, Fox News. We report, you decide. Napa know how. Buckets are good. Good at storing, carrying, and hauling all kinds of stuff. But the Napa bucket for $3.99 does more good than that. Like getting you 20% off three or more items that fit inside. And donating a dollar to the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund. So do our soldiers and yourself some good. And save 20% with the Napa bucket. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores while supplies last. Exclusions apply. Offer expires 7 31 17 there is more to me, Queen Eliara of Elfgard, than my elven magic. Just as there's more to Geico than saving you money, Geico also gives you 24-7 access to licensed agents online, on the phone, or on the Geico app. And while I am a mighty elf queen, I am also a mighty big fan of barbecue potato chips. Minions? More smoky mesquite. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Although relationships do take work, it should not be the job of just one person to keep it afloat. Kickboxing provides a cardio workout that engages every muscle group in the body. It regulates our blood pressure, reducing feelings of anger. Most of us skip taking naps because we think they're a sign of laziness, but many studies have found that napping for as little as 10 minutes a day is proven to boost memory, creativity, and learning. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Here are today's headlines from The Source, WOCA. A South Florida judge ruled yesterday that lawmakers went too far when they crafted a fix for Florida's stand-your-ground law. During the regular legislative session, lawmakers changed the bill to shift more of a burden onto prosecutors. According to Miami-Dade Circuit Judge Milton Hirsch, if there were to be changes made to the Florida statute, then those changes should have been made by the Florida Supreme Court and not by the legislature. The revised law was never popular with Florida prosecutors, so it is likely they will review